Hey, welcome to Quantum Code, I'm Martin. In this video tutorial, you'll learn how to make objects disappear when you snap your fingers like Thanos. Awesome, let's go straight into it. Let's start with a new 2D scene, I'll call it car. And I add a sprite node to it. For the texture, I drag and drop my car.png. And now for the effect, let's go in material, new shader material. For the shader, you want to select new visual shader, click on it. And on the mode, you want to be, you want it to be canvas item. Let's resize this. First of all, let's add the car texture. So you can right click to create a shader node, then type texture. And you want to select the one under texture functions, this one. Now you want to change the texture to texture 2D. And if you take the RGB, so the color, and you set it at the output color, as you can see, we don't have the alpha channel anymore. And now if you drag and drop the alpha, we have our texture back. Now let's add another texture. So right click, same texture. And this one will be a noise texture. So you select new noise texture. Here under noise, you want to create a new open simplex noise. And we can visualize it by clicking RGB. Let's add an input. We will use the time function. Then let's add a sinus function. So our values will be between minus one and one. Then we can divide it by two. So it will be between 0 0.5 and minus 0 0.5. And then we can do a subtract. This one. And take RGB and, and subtract the, the time function we had. As you can see, it is um, creating um, a noise which is going darker and then lighter. Now we can just add a round function. So it will be 0 or 1. Let's visualize. So we have some black parts and some white parts. Now let's multiply. This with our alpha channel. Sorry. This one goes here. This one here. And set it back in the alpha output. As you can see, we already have a result. The car is appearing and disappearing. So this is already a good shader effect and you can use this one if you want. But what we will do is create a, um, a outline for this effect and this outline will be um, glowing. So it will really crea create a cool effect. For the outline, we need to create a little offset. So we'll select this one and subtract a little value. For example, we'll take 0 0.04. Then we want to invert it. So we can use subtract again and make this one here and do a one minus our noise. So when this one is dark, this one is light. And when this one is darker, this one is light. So that's good. Now we can round again. And then we can add a color. 
Let's select the color constant for the moment. And I'll set it to some kind of yellow or orange color. Now we want to multiply our um, texture here, this one, by this color. So it will not be black and white, but black and yellow or orange. Let's just select multiply. Want to multiply vectors. So let's set this one here and this one. As you can see, we have the same texture, but this one is um, orange. Now we need to add this um, this outline we created to our color. So the color will not go directly here, but now it will need something more, which will be a add operator. So we'll select our color and add this orange color to it. Let's set it to the color output. So as you can see now, we have a cool outline, a yellow outline. If you want to be able to change the color in the um, shader params, so uh, right here, if you want to be able to change it in the inspector, you need to have a um, color uniform and set it at the same place. So now, as you can see, I have a shader param and I can change the color whenever I want. Now it's a red color. I can set it to a light blue color and the change are di like directly made. Also, the time function is useful if you want to see the change uh, when you create the shader, but uh, you will um, not use it with a time function, I think. It's more useful to use it with a shader param, so you can use a twin node to um, create the effect on your game. So here we will not use this uh, input time anymore. Instead, we will use a Scala Uniform, this one, and set it here. So this Scala Uniform, you can uh, call it as you want. I'll call it Dissolve Rate. And now you can see the, the Dissolve Rate in the shader params, and you can uh, adjust it. You need to keep it between minus one, which is a full car, you can see the car, and a one, which is the, the car just disappeared. So if you want, you can use a twin node. So you go from minus one to one. And so you see the, the, the car is disappearing. Or you can use it from one to minus one. So you make the car appear. I've just added some other sprites so you can see the effect we will create. So for now, when the car is disappearing or appearing, uh, our effect is not glowy. So as you can see, we have this outline, which is nice, but it is not creating a kind of light around. In order to do this, you need to add a child node to your main scene. In this, case, in this case, I will add it to my car scene, but if you have a world scene or something, you need to add it to this world and just add a world environment node. Then you want to create a new environment. For the background, you want to set it as a canvas. And the next step is to go under Glow, select Enable, and you can adjust the params like Intensity, Trend, Bloom. And I recommend you to enable Bcubic Upscale as it will smooth the blockiness of this effect. Now, if we go back to our sprite, our car sprite, as you can see, the effect is here only when we have our dissolve effect. So this is really cool. Now, if you want to animate this, so for example, when the player uh, hit a button or mouse click or anything, if you want to make the card disappear or appear, you can use either an animation player node or you can just use a twin node. 
So you add a child node, twin. I'll set this twin node as a child of my car sprite. And I'll just attach a script to it. I've just written the code. So as you can see, we have a variable, which is the dissolve rate. I set it to minus one, so the car will be visible. Then we interpolate our twin node. So the property is our dissolve rate. So we'll change this variable. We'll change it from minus one to one during 1.5 seconds, and we'll use a linear transformation. After that, we use the process function to set our material shader param. The shader param is the dissolve rate. Uh, if we go back to our sprite, it's this one, dissolve rate. And we set it to our variable dissolve rate, which will be changed by our twin. Now, um, for example, if you have a function called um, start effect, you just need to call twin dot start right here. In my case, uh, I will call uh, my start effect function in the ready function, but you can call it wherever you want and whenever you want. Let's test this. And the car is disappearing right away with the cool glowy effect we created. Hope you enjoyed and you will create some really cool stuff with um, this effect. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, uh, check out our other videos and don't forget to subscribe and activate the bell so you get notified when the next video is out. Also, you can leave us any feedback or any question in the comment section, we will answer quickly. See you!